Welcome to Gaining Vision. I'm Melanie. Thanks so much for clicking. To my returning family, the visionaries, thank you for your continuous love and support. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please feel at home. Have you had an opportunity to hit that subscribe button yet? If not, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, hit subscribe. And please don't forget to like and share. As I was doing my research, as you know, I love doing my research, I came across a video where Minister Pander was speaking at Parliament. But it wasn't just Minister Pander, it was also a member of the EFF, and they were talking about the conflict in Israel and the impact it has on Palestine. I was educated and informed not only on the perspective of each of these members, but also in the way that Minister Pander and the member of EFF handled themselves in Parliament. First, I'm going to play Minister Pander and come back and analyze, and then I'm going to play the member of EFF and come back and analyze. So, Minister Pander was sharing her thoughts and ideas before she was rudely interrupted. Let's take a listen. I was taught when I was very young that insults are the last refuge of a scoundrel. And so calling me a terrorist, friend of Hamas, etc., is like water off a duck's back because it's an absolute untruth and is a mere insult of a scoundrel who has run out of ideas. It has been clear in all our contributions that we support a two-state solution. This means we believe Israel has the right to exist as a state alongside a state of Palestine. This has been the long-standing view of the African National Congress before anyone expressed a view on Palestine and so don't come here and attempt to claim any knowledge. The rights of Palestinian people are infringed on a daily basis. The Honorable Legota was reported in a Jerusalem newspaper as saying there is no apartheid in Israel. People ride on buses together. He forgot to say that Palestinians are forced to live in small enclaves they are not allowed to own their own property. Their land can be seized without any compensation. And they have to carry identity documents, go through a range of points where their identity is constantly checked. In some, they exist in an apartheid state. So, chairperson attempts to cast aspersions will not cause us to fail to speak for the oppressed, wherever they may be. The atrocities we've reported upon in this debate are real and they're acknowledged by millions. The fake news of baby beheadings have been tried by the greatest in world power and have been proven to be false social media reports. And for such to be reported in this house as though it is factual is absolutely disgusting lies. The bombing of hospitals, which was denied, has been proven to be real. Honorable Minister, Thank you. please take your seat. There's a point of order request. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Is the Honorable Minister prepared to take a question? You can take your seat, Honorable Minister. Honorable Dr. Melda. I've asked if the Honorable Minister is prepared to take a question. Honorable Minister, are you prepared to take a question from the yes. Honorable no, Melda? Yeah, the Honorable Member can pose it. Hello? Did I, did, did I hear you correctly saying that the atrocities that we are speaking about, the beheading of children, that those are fake news, that it's not true? Is that the position of the South African government? I want to ask you now. Thank you. No, it is evidence that has been provided by a range of non-governmental organizations, both in Israel and Palestine, because we don't only speak to Palestinians, we speak to peace-loving Israelis as well. And we know that there's a lot of fake news that attempts to cast Palestinians in a bad light. And it has been admitted, even from the White House spokesperson, that that statement that was made at the highest level was actually proven not to be factual. So, honorable member, I've responded to your question. 
And it's important, as I said at the start of my contribution, that when we speak on these matters, let us speak being honest and factual. The facts are the people of Palestine are denied the right to exist as human beings. They're denied the right to enjoy the freedoms and the rights we so love as South Africans, the rights and freedoms we fought so hard for, the rights and freedoms we united on as a diverse South African people. Today, some of us in this house belong, be, believe these rights belong to some and not to others. That is not the South African way. We believe all human beings enjoy the right to exist in freedom, enjoying justice and humanity. And that is the message that has to come out of this house. This house cannot stand up for abuse, cannot stand up for the infringement of other human beings, no matter who those human beings are. We've never sought retribution. I have the story of my grandfather died of a broken heart. He was a tailor and he had worked very hard, his fingers down to the skin, to make enough money to buy a house in Durban. And they got that house, my grandfather and my grandmother. Two years after they got it, the area was declared a white area. They lost that house without compensation. And he essentially died of a broken heart. I have no retribution. Because today, I'm part of seeking to build a better South Africa. And our role must be to seek to build a better world that that benefit we enjoy of human rights, of a fantastic constitution, of having institutions that are democratic and work for all of us, that privilege is not just for us. It must be for everyone. And in any debate we have, if we are true to ourselves, if we are true to our history, if we are true to what we've achieved, we will stand up and say what is being done to the people of Palestine is wrong, is intolerable, and we will not pretend to accept it. I thank you, Chairman. I love how educated Minister Pander is and how well she eloquently states her facts and information. And when the Member of Parliament interrupted with a point of order, and she was asked to sit down, it didn't faze her at all. She got back up, cool, calm, and collective, answered his question with facts, informed information, and answered his question, then picked up and carried on her speech. It was incredible. She is a true professional. I was impressed by this, but also informed, which I really appreciated. I like to hear the perspective. Now we know Minister Pander is a professional and she's had lots of experience in handling any audience. And Parliament is not an easy place to speak, but she wasn't phased at all. What are your thoughts on the way she handled it? Let's take a listen to the EFF member because he also spoke so perfectly on this topic, sharing his perspective on the conflict of Palestine and Israel. Let's take a listen. Thank you, uh, House Jefferson. We're here to stand with Palestine. We're here to take sides in favor of the oppressed. Condemn Israel and declare that it is a murderous apartheid regime engaged in systematic extermination of Palestinians. It is not a single event. They are engaged in a system permanently subjecting Palestinians to racial humiliation. We do this because we understand that our freedom here was attained through massive international solidarity by peoples of the world, 90% of which had never set foot here. It is in this context that we are responding to the suffering of a people who live thousands of kilometers from South Africa. We know that we are international citizens. As we stand here, Israel has massacred over 10,000 Palestinians in Gaza under their military assault, killing children, bombing churches, hospitals, schools. Many have been painting Palestinians who are responding over half a century to Israeli systematic oppression as terrorists. 
The label of terrorist, we know it very well, because it is a label that was put to Mandela. It is a label that was given to Subukwe. It is a label that was given to the, to the liberation movement. The Israeli state was formed in 48 with the full support of Western powers through forced removals and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Fact. It was inaugurated as a Jewish-only state where Palestinians who have the right to the land are not returned or are not allowed to return. Yet any Jewish person who has not born there, who has never been there, can go and attain citizenship with immediate effect. They control movements of people through thousands of military checkpoints. In fact, they have built a wall and a fence around Gaza controlling entry and exit of people and goods. There are separate roads for Palestinians and Jewish people around many Jewish settlements in Palestine. Palestinians do not enjoy freedom to demonstrate against their oppressor. They are told demonstrations, they, are, they get arrested, they even get killed. Thousands of Palestinians are arrested without trial, even charged in Israeli military courts. The world knows this. And when Palestinians respond, they are called terrorists. The Israeli state is fundamentally a racist state. Nobody must be allowed to coexist with a fundamentally racist state. Who can't, who can't be asked in the interest of the values of our constitution to recognize a racist state whose establishment is for a Jewish-only people at the expense of Palestinians? Why would you do that? Those are the facts. This is not a religious war, Mrut. It's an evil war. It's not a holy war. There is no people who have a God's right to be superior to anyone. The Israelis don't represent the Jewish communities of the world. They represent Zionism and racism. It must be said here, whoever supports them supports racism. So what is South Africa doing in a relationship with a racist regime? If they are engaged in a genocidal exercise, Minister Naledi Pando, why are you recalling people for consultation? Because you've already declared that there is a genocide. Why are we friends with people who are violating the values of our constitution? Why are we friends with people who are massacring children in hospitals, in schools? What must happen? What must be said before the whole world isolates Israel? Israelis, Palestinians for the longest time never asked you for a single bullet, which they should because they've got the right to fight even with military arms against the racist regime. They've asked you for a simple thing. Isolate Israel the way the world isolated apartheid. When are you doing that? Let's sever ties because a relationship with Israel as South African offends our constitutional values. It offends any rational thinking about coexistence. It offends peace. We should recall the ambassadors, everybody. We should fire the ambassador of Israel. We can't be friends with Israel until they establish a society in compliance with international law on one hand, and they recognize the right of Palestinians to coexist. I wish, I wish for once in our lives, we can be on the right side of history. All Let's right, sever right. all ties with the racist. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really, truly appreciated the fact and passion that he spoke of speaking from his heart and what himself and the EFF believe on this very topic. You can see how invested he was. And again, totally a professional. Speaking clear, concisely, and articulately on their perspective. What did you think of these two perspectives? I know that every member of parliament has an opportunity to speak, and they only have a short period of time to do it. But these two perspectives were educational, informative, and passionate. They shared exactly what they wanted to in a clear, concise manner. I think that if every member of parliament, every politician spoke like these two, we would be well informed and on our way to understanding the perspective of the government. I'd love to hear your thoughts on both of these speeches, your thoughts and ideas on their perspectives, 
So please drop them in the comments below and let's have a conversation. Also, please don't forget to hit that notification button, like and share, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.